This dive explores a deep sea coral mound located on the Stetson Miami Terrace. The ROV discovers a flat seabed at the beginning of the dive with few observable living organisms. At the beginning of the dive, an unidentified glass sponge is observed on a flat sea floor composed of coral rubble. Hydroids and foraminifera coat the rubble, giving it a fuzzy appearance. This small, sparsely branched gorgonia has many contracted polyps. Few other corals are seen here, suggesting that this area is not a prime environment for feeding or growth. This octocoral has pinnules that come to a point giving them a snowflake look. A hatchet fish is observed at the base of the mound, scrubbing its body against the hard coral rubble. Some fish do this behavior to remove parasites from their body. Rat tails are very common to this area. The small fish wanders around the coral rubble using the barbells on their chin as a sensory detection method. A swimming crinoid appears momentarily in front of a purple gorgonia coral. There is a crab at the foot of the coral and a retracted anemone halfway up the stalk. Two Venus flower basket glass sponges are attached to the dead coral rubble. Typical of this species, a pair of mated shrimp will live symbiotically in the sponge's osculum. Several bulbous yellow hyalinema sponges have been spotted in this region of the western Atlantic. A stalk composed of siliceous spicules twists together to lift the sponge upward into the flowing current of the Gulf Stream. Near the beginning of the dive, a fan-shaped sponge with large pores is observed on the coral rubble. On the second coral mound, Duva Florida appears with a brittle star affixed below the base to a dead coral branch. A tall hydroid sways behind it. A pencil urchin is company to several brittle stars sharing the coral rubble with a glass sponge and bamboo colony. The urchin has very thick spines and preys on coral polyps. A dinner plate jellyfish is observed while ascending the first mound in the dive. This jellyfish species is unique because it actively hunts its prey. White porous sponges were very abundant on the dive. A small shrimp dwells under a fold of the twisting sponge next to a carnivorous tunicate. As the Lophelia pertusa rubble continues to blanket the sea floor, a helmet jellyfish comes into view. The red coloring acts as camouflage because red light cannot reach past 15 to 30 meters of the sea surface. A male sea spider carries a sack of offspring. Baby sea spiders hatch as larvae and eventually molt into their juvenile stage. Juvenile sea spiders are then released into the water column. This small white gorgonia displays alternating branches with alternating polyps. The tentacles are clear and can be seen against the dark background of coral rubble substrate. A small cephalopod attempts to hide from the ROV in the dead coral matrix. This four-horned octopus will typically feed on small organisms like clams and shrimp found on the seafloor. The first black coral of the dive is observed at the base of the mound. This young black coral's individual polyps can be seen. Crinoids are very abundant in this area and can be seen swimming across the dead coral framework. They are bottom-dwelling organisms that rarely swim unless threatened or disturbed. A four-legged sea star is feeding on the epizoic film coating the bed of coral rubble. The sea star will likely regenerate its missing fifth leg. A small sea star rests on dead Lophelia rubble and feeds on epizoic film the rubble offers. An eight-legged Solaster sun star moves across the dead coral branches. These stars prey on other echinoderms and typically dig through sediment for their favorite snack of brittle stars. A 45 centimeter colony of live Lophelia pertusa is observed with exposed polyps on the mound's flank. A partially dead Afrocalistes sponge guards the front facing Lophelia pertusa. As the ROV ascends the first mound, an Atlantic bird squid cruises by. The squid's tentacles are folded up by its head in a defensive position. 
This octocoral is about 12 to 15 centimeters wide and exhibits scaly polyps. It has small tentacles pointing down towards the sea floor, a characteristic of the Primnoidae family. A large yellow sea star is observed on the coral rubble. The textured structures on the sea star's dorsal surface may aid in feeding or act as a deterrent to amphipods. Three hours into the dive, the mound crest presents large areas of living Lophelia pertusa on bush-like dead standing coral. This area hosts a wide range of living organisms. An orange madrepora is discovered in a coral biodiversity hotspot on the mound's crest. Here live cup coral, stylaster, a yellow gorgonian, and some primnoid gorgonians. Near the peak of the first mound, several bamboo corals are thriving amongst the dead coral rubble. The brown banding on the white coral stalk is added with continued growth. Between living colonies of Lophelia pertusa, two glass sponges of the same species are observed at the mound crest. The sponge on the left exhibits a yellow zoanthid infestation, while the one on the right does not. A large, slender-armed sea star clings and feeds on a tall glass sponge. These large yellow gorgonia have a distinct planar branching pattern. They are supported by a single stalk and are abundant in this area. A black coral is observed behind an Afrocalisti sponge that hosts a zoanthid infestation. The coral polyps are long and grow sparsely along the branches. It was found on the north side of the mound where Lophelia pertusa is less abundant and Afrocalistes is present. Dense areas of dead standing coral dominate the crest of the mound. From the base of the mound to the crest, the ROV traveled approximately 75 meters. A crinoid with many fuzzy pinnules sits on coral rubble amongst two other different species of crinoids. It has many arms and a short stalk draped with brittle stars and bamboo coral. Approaching the base of the second mound, a red octocoral is identified by its color, large polyps, and long orifices which help it to suspension feed. A bright red bubblegum coral has fallen over onto the dead coral rubble. Several sea stars wrap their long, flexible arms around the coral. The surface of the sea star is covered with soft tissue and provides a commensal relationship with the coral. While the ROV scales the second mound, a small colony of Analipsamia is observed just before the beginning of the Lophelia Reef. A squat lobster and cup coral are also present. A red-colored black whip coral is observed on a peak atop the second mound. It is emerging out of live and dead standing coral substrate. The peak is cloaked in different species of corals and sponges. Nearing the top of the mound, a living Lophelia pertusa colony falls prey to a small, short-spined sea urchin. The substrate is mostly dead standing coral and coral rubble. Nearing the end of the dive, there are not many exposed polyps within the corals. This bamboo coral shows white banding and brown banding. At the second mound's crest, a branching yellow octocoral with small, fragile polyps is observed. The branches are arranged sporadically and surrounded by an area of high productivity on the living and dead standing coral substrate. At the end of the dive, the ROV has a view of the second mound's northern side which is heavily dominated by live stony coral and dead standing reef with ridge-like features. <laughs>